Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is LC. Today, I want to continue the discussion of how your personality defines your investment style. In this video, I will discuss characters, possible strengths and weaknesses of four different personality. Intuitor, Feeler, Thinker and Sensor. We will also look into possible investment style an individual may choose based on his or her primary personality. Before we proceed, if you haven't watched the part 1 of this video series, please view the video where you can find the link in the video description. In the first part, I highlighted that two fundamental components in successful investment are health and self-awareness. Health is not our focus today, so we skip it. Self-awareness is the key to developing your potential. It brings to a level of understanding the causes and consequences of behavior. Only with this knowledge can you realize your strengths and weaknesses and then take action to better yourself. As I said before, one of the reasons one method works so well for an individual is because the method fits personality of the individual. It doesn't need to be 100% fit. Close enough will do. Maybe 80% or 90% fit. The individual can easily adopt and adjust his mindset to the mindset required by the particular method. I think you should pick the method that fits your personality not changing your personality to fit the method. If you self-aware your personality type, you can easily pick the method that fits you the most. Then you can also adapt and adjust your mindset accordingly. I had also shared one survey to assist you to know yourself better. If you haven't done the survey, I encourage you to do so. You can download the survey by clicking the link provided in the video description. Let's recap. The personality typology we are going to use is created by Carl Jung. There are four different types of personality in Carl's model. Feeler, Thinker, Intuitor and Sensor. Before we discuss this personality in details, I would like to share my personality based on the results of the personality survey. When I am in favorable situation, I am primarily a thinker with sensor attributes. My score in feeler and intuitor is not high. When I am in stress situation, the thinker in myself will give way to the sensor. Let's start with Tinker. In general, Tinker uses logic, analysis, facts and figures to think and act. They put heavy emphasis on logic, ideas and systematic inquiry. Tinker finds satisfaction in identifying a problem developing a variety of possible solutions, weighing them carefully and testing them. Tinker has good ability to develop systematic methods. Tinker is highly effective in organizing himself and others to research and plan. If you have been following my post for some time, you probably can see that I have developed system methods to study stocks. I researched a stock thoroughly by checking its historical performance, 
the current state of business, future of the business. I also have systematic way to do valuation for stock. My methods are quite structural and logical where the methods minimize involvement of emotions and feelings. Tinker tends to look at the time from all dimensions, past, present, and future. This is because Tinker tend to do tariff analysis. Also, Tinker enjoy continuing to learn and extend the framework of his thinking. If Tinker is in stressful condition, Tinker will be overly cautious, overly methodical, overly logical, and overly conservative. Tinker can be so involving in weighing, testing, researching, and checking. As mentioned, I, as a Tinker, have issues of overly cautious and sometimes overly conservative. I self-aware of my issues and I also paid for some lessons before year 2010. To reduce these issues, I have set a couple of rules for myself and you can take this for your reference if you are a thinker. First, I remove analysis of macroeconomics from my analysis. I still follow what happening around the world, but I wouldn't take macroeconomics into serious consideration in my analysis. My analysis of a stock is sufficiently thorough, but adding macroeconomics will make it very complicated, slow down my decision making, and also few times of analysis paralysis. Second, I have reduced metrics and charts in my analysis. Many metrics and charts do not make a good study. And worse, sometimes they confuse me with information that contradict to each other. I just keep the key metrics and relevant charts in my analysis. If you study some of the Excel that I posted online, set of key metrics that I used is tailored for a particular industry. Third, I set my focus mainly on few industries, commercial banks, CPO companies, telco, food and beverages, oil and gas, retail, and manufacturing of some niche products. Fourth, I cut down many new subscriptions to avoid information overload. Now, my main source of information is company announcement in Busa, DH Malaysia, and Sinju. I also left a lot of Facebook groups and Facebook pages. Fifth, just now, I mentioned that I have censored as the secondary personality. There are some strengths in censor I could use to avoid over-conservative and over-cautious. While I maintain long-term perspective in my analysis and valuation, I use quarterly results as decision-making point to accumulate or sell a stock. All these changes are very rewarding as I have more time for my family, hobby, workout, traveling, and study. Next, filler, as the name implied, put heavy emphasis on human interaction, emotions, and feelings. Filler demonstrates ability to be sensitive to the needs and wants of others. 
So, fear is good in sorting out complex emotional problems and situations. In the aspect of investment, fear may be able to gauge trustworthiness and stewardship of senior management of a company. Fear is very good in observing body language and micro expression of others in communication. As a filler, filler is more oriented to the past than to other dimensions of time. They enjoy draw on past experience and emotional interplay by relating present experience to significant past memories. If filler is in stressful condition, filler may be having much less interest in developing concepts, plans, or programs. Filler unlikely do tariff research for a stock. Filler may prefer to gather information from others, maybe through oral communication and written material such as blog and forum. Because of this, Fuller may not able to form his or her own opinion because Fuller may be easily influenced by others. If you are a Fuller, I have few suggestions for you. First, pick and focus on those business where you can understand easily. Those business that have wide economy modes and making money during good and bad times. For instance, food and beverages, apparel and retail companies. Second, do your homework seriously. I know you may not enjoy doing that. You don't need to do tariff research like what a thinker does because you focus on those businesses like food and beverages and retail companies, you can use their historical growth to do some simple projection. Third, if you really want to talk to somebody for different opinion, you can do so, but just talk to one or two person who you can trust and they know you very well. If possible, try to avoid forum and Facebook group. Fourth, attend a gym. You are very good in observing body language and micro expression of other people. Observe the senior management. Observe whether their response is sincere and genuine. Observe whether they're telling lies or not. Next, Intuitor. Intuitor puts heavy emphasis on ideas, innovation, concepts, theory, and long-range thinker. They enjoy to explore the world of possibilities. Intuitor is typically a fast and deep thinker. They have excellent imagination. They can see relationships between things that many others do not understand or are unable to comprehend. Also, they excel in, in integrative tasks and situations demanding a long-term view. At this point, you probably guess that Intuitor prefer to find investment opportunities through macroeconomic analysis. Intuitor enjoys to study trade war, interest rate, budget deficits, national reserves, currencies, government policies, and so on. They will look for companies that gain benefits from government policies, such as government budget for a certain year, government policies to increase demand of biodiesel, government initiatives to stimulate property industry and so on. Intuitor may not enjoy to do tariff analysis. 
if Twitter still studies financial statements, but they may not go into the details. In Twitter, put more emphasis on what should be done in the future than what has been done before. On the other hand, in Twitter may be seen as long on vision, short on action. They may be irritated with tasks and demand detailed evidence. Based on my own experience dealing with Intuitor, I found that sometimes they are hard to pin down and understand. They seem to be in a world of their own. Here, I would like to share few suggestions to Intuitor. First, Continue your analysis with high and broad level perspective, but please spend a bit of time in digging out details. Second, especially to those extreme intuitor, please work out a proper investment plan and make sure you execute the plan. As for Senso, Senso is action oriented. They are dual. They want to get things done here and now without unnecessary and time consuming deliberation. Sensor tends to emphasize short term results and act quickly. Sensor never wishes to spin his wheels worrying about the past, nor does he try to crystal ball the future. All sensors cares is now. In terms of investment, they prefer momentum investing over value investing. Momentum investors tend to buy stocks that have had high returns over the past 3 to 12 months or capitalize on the continuance of an existing market trend and sell those that have had poor returns over the same period. Therefore, momentum investors usually use sector rotation to find the potential and the current theme of the market, then use quarterly results to find good potential companies. They probably use simple valuation multiples such as PE multiple and simple chart analysis for market timing. In general, Sensor may not consider sufficiently the long-term consequences of his actions. They overemphasize short-term results and act impulsively. At worst, I do see some cases where they demonstrated tunnel vision, being defensively overreactive to the difference of opinions. Just now, I mentioned that when I'm I am in stressful situation. The sensor in me will become primary and the thinker become secondary. There was few cases I made wrong investment decisions when performance of a business or stock price was very underperforming. For example, during subprime when getting prices was in range 3 ringgit to 4 ringgit, I accumulated some Genting shares. Then, in the early of 2010, for some reasons that I have forgotten, Genting prices dropped from 7.5 to 6.3. Probably because of stress in life and work, I totally put the long term perspective into rubbish bin. I sold half of the shares in February 2010. Then after a few days, I just realized that the issues encountered by the business are just short term. In fact, I should find opportunity to accumulate Genting. If my memory serves me correctly, there are another two to three similar cases. So, I set a couple of rules for myself when I'm in stressful situation. 
you can use this for your reference. First, before I make any decision, I will discuss with my wife as often she will give me different perspective. Second, I will keep my view for two to three days. After two to three days, if my view remain the same, I will execute it. Third, I won't open trading platform during daytime. I will only check stock prices when I need to or on the weekend. Now, Google provides a very good feature where Google will alert me if there is any drastic change of price for the stocks in my watch list. Otherwise, I won't check prices until weekend. Besides, I have few suggestions for Sensor. First, stick to your investment plan. Validate your reasons of buying a share before selling it. Second, try to apply some long-term perspective in your analysis. However, I have to mind you though, if you are momentum investor, don't simply apply long-term perspective when your investment plan tells you to sell. If not, your investment will turn from short or mid-term to very long-term. You know what I meant. No matter what personality you are, you should maintain modus operandi as highlighted here. First, beware of your personality. Always maintain high self-awareness. Intensity of personality in you may change over time. So, always do self-reflection. If necessary, you can take the personality survey again. Second, be aware of the situation. Aware the situation you are facing. Are you in favorable situation or in stressful situation? What causes the stress? What are your alternatives? Third, adopt your personality for the situation. This doesn't mean changing your personality. Remember, everyone has different intensity level of personality type. You should leverage strengths in different personality type and identify ways to mitigate your weaknesses. I want to end my video with a quote from Bruce Lee. If you enjoyed the video, give me a like and share it out. If you didn't, a dislike. Subscribe for more, ring the bell, and I will see you in the next one.